Hello there, so I am back from the convention, Essex Star Wars Weekend, and we spent just over an hour there. There were so many stalls around. I'll show you the very few clips that I took. I definitely need to get better at recording things that I see because there was so much good stuff, but obviously a lot of it was catered towards Star Wars and general sci-fi fans. There wasn't just Star Wars, you would have seen the signed Funkos that we saw. That was the first stall when we went in. Well, actually it was the second. There was one by the entrance, but that was the first in the main hall. And they had Doctor Who signed Funkos, obviously Star Wars. They also had some Marvel ones. They had some Lord of the Rings ones and they were all really, really cool. My favorite was the Kenobi with the EOP. But of course, you wanna know about the Lego. Well, there are a few different things that I've actually purchased from some of these stalls and I actually might try to go again next year and try and order a few parts later on from their websites because there are some really, really good grabs that we've got here. And first up, I'm gonna be taking you through the purchases I got from a stall that was run by Vader's Raiders. They're raising money for one of their colleagues that have passed away and they seem to be some sort of costume group similar to, perhaps you'll probably know the 501st Legion. They're the biggest Star Wars costume group and they had a bunch of Lego figures. They had a display case from Lego with a few more of the expensive figures, some of the Mandos, some Snow Troopers, and I think there was a Princess Leia as well. But they had a massive bucket of Lego figures, and me and my fiance went diving. She did actually pick up a minifigure from this lot, and I picked up three. So I think we'll get into looking at them ones first. But later on in the video, there's also a mystery bag that I'll be opening from minifigures and more. And I did buy one of their custom minifigures, I had a handful in my hand. My hands were filled at one point with all the different ones. I've taken a few images that'll flash up on screen. There was a hologram astromech, which I thought would be really, really cool because that is the logo, the hologram of R2-D2 that Lego are using for their 25 years of Lego Star Wars. And there was also a smaller R2. So I'll have to pick these up at some point. Really, really cool figures, but we'll take a look at them and check the quality later on. Stay tuned for that mystery bag. You know I'm gonna open that right at the end of the video. But right now, let's take a look at the Vader's Raiders minifigures that I picked up. Before we get on to seeing any of the minifigures, we actually have a brand new member to add to the members board. And I feel like I might as well capture this moment on video, the moment that someone gets added to the members board. Also, by the way, this is the stamp we got to get into the convention. I haven't just randomly drawn on my hand. So we are introducing George G, as in George space G, not Georgie. Sometimes I can speak a bit too fast and words just don't come out perfect. Now this is fairly recently painted, so hopefully I don't smudge any of this, but welcome to Master Moldy's members boards. I guess we can keep this one on the side as it is blank. There is a spot if you do want to join, be sure to hit the join button below. But now onto the not one, not two, not three, but four minifigures we picked up today. The four pound one is my fiance. So we'll do that last build up to the end. I think the first one we'll start off is this, and it is a Power Miners minifigure. I really love my Power Miner set, and I'm actually missing one of the heads from my old minifigures. I'm pretty sure it's this headpiece. Let's get it out the foil bag with the little metallic printing. They had a few of these power mining minifigures. I believe both of these are mostly actual minifigures. They did have one with a classic head on and it was very tempting to get. So I really don't remember what headpiece I am missing. If I manage to find where I've written it down anywhere, I'll have it on the screen just so you can see how wrong I was. But I think this is a cool minifigure nonetheless. I love the power miners theme and I've got pretty much most of the first wave of the sets, I do believe. So this is gonna be added to my other Power Miners minifigures. And I did say there were quite a few. These are all official Lego minifigures, by the way. And I did actually pick up a second Power Miners minifigure. Now I'm pretty sure I do have this one. I don't know what condition mine is in, but this was pretty good for one pound. You really can't go wrong getting another Lego minifigure. So I did get another. Most of my belts and legs have actually gone missing on mine. So at least I've got another pair of them. And as I said, I really like the Power Miners. 
I would have definitely picked up the third one if I hadn't seen my other minifigure that I picked up. But I'm happy to have both of these. Hopefully this is the head that I was missing or at least one of these has some parts I can use. But if not, I'm just going to add these to the collection as nice custom minifigures. But the bucket was huge. You've already seen an image. I'll whack it up again. I probably should have got a clip of me sifting through because there were some real classic minifigures that I'm sure are worth quite a bit. Again, this was only a pound and I actually got an early Lego minifigure. This one is a pirate. There were also two police figures and I say minifigure, this isn't mini. Comparing this to a new Lego minifigure, this is just a figure and it's really, really cool. It definitely looks like the new Lego figures. You can tell somewhat there are some similar marks on it. And I'm not actually sure what set this from, what year is this from, or what this figure is from, but it looked old. It's got some really nice hands. You can see it's got three fingers on one side and a thumb on the other. And for one pound, I would love to add this to the other classic set that I got on Bricklink a while back this 1970 space set with a red spaceman. This is the classic spaceman that came in the set. So I've got some more bits of Lego history. I'm not a collector. I'm not gonna get any more. I'm not gonna go out of my way and get any more. If I see some more uh, another convention for quite cheap, I'll probably end up picking it up. But I like that I've got these two parts of Lego history and they'll probably be displayed next to each other until I get a display case for any more I get. So we've got the old Lego Pirate and the two Power Miners minifigures, and there are some Star Wars figures to come. I've got to leave them further on in the video, otherwise you'll just watch them and click away. But my fiance found a really cool minifigure. You can see him peeking out over the top, and that is the Quidditch Draco Malfoy. They also had the older Harry Potter Quidditch one with the yellow face, but we went for Draco. He looks really, really cool. And let's get him out of the bag so we can see that torso properly. As you can see, funnily enough, my camera hasn't had any focusing problems yet. That is a first. Let's not try and I literally was just saying how good it was and it went out of focus. Anyway, the torso is really, really cool. If we take a look on the back, there's no back printing, which this is quite an old minifigure, so that is fair enough, but this is a fine addition to my partner's Harry Potter collection, and if you've seen any of our collection videos, you'll know she has a load of minifigures, almost enough to rival my Star Wars ones. Well, not quite, but perhaps in terms of named minifigures, perhaps. And I've also got a few more Ziploc bags now for storing my Lego, so that was actually really handy. But now on to the customs from minifigures and more. Com. They did have this bag, which was three mystery minifigures for £10, and they actually sold it to me for half price. My fiance said it's because I was hanging around so much, and I actually sifted through all the custom minifigures they had, because I definitely wanted to pick up at least one of them, and I went with this Ninth Sister Custom. Not only is the printing really, really cool, I'm not sure if this is official Lego parts, because a load of these have been custom molded, so... We'll see about how good the quality is, but we've got the three mystery minifigures over there to break open in just a second. But first off, let's build this Ninth Sister minifigure. And not only does the minifigure come with all the pieces to build it, we've got a duplicate head here. We also have some shoulder pads, but we also get a spare hand, which is quite nice. It's a small piece, can be lost and probably broken easily. So let's put this minifigure together. And here we have our custom ninth sister. Or at least I'm pretty sure this is the ninth sister. I think the seventh sister was the other one from the game. And I'd love to get a custom of that. They also had a purge trooper, which I was so tempted to pick up. But the detailing on this minifigure is amazing. You can see on the side, we've got the Imperial insignia on both sides of the shoulders. And this is on an extra piece that beefs up the minifigure and makes them look really, really cool. We've also got a little bit of arm printing for the cuffs of her sleeve. And the printing looks really, really cool. If you can see on the toes there, they do actually have separate colored toes, which lines up to the character from the game. And if you have played Jedi Fallen Order, this is a great minifigure to get because 
We're getting Cal as a bonus figure. We got BD in the buildable droid. We're not gonna get any other figures from Fallen Order unless they perhaps put the Purge Trooper in a battle pack, which I would still love to see. But this is gonna go great with my Cal Kestus. And the quality is up there. It's definitely not Lego, but it's also not too far away. The way the head and the helmet connect is really good. I'd say the shoulder pads are slightly tighter over the top than Lego. Legos tend to be a bit looser, but I think that's to do with the hole on the pads. But look at that head. It's got some 3D molded parts on it and you do get an alternate head which doesn't have them bottom bits. If you're perhaps more of a Lego purist, I guess, but I really do like this head on the bottom. So perhaps we can use this for another character. Let me know what you think this head could be used for down in the comic. It's not an official Lego piece. There is no Lego molding on there and I don't remember seeing any Lego logos on any of these. So these are completely custom to this company or perhaps they can import them from somewhere. The helmet is really, really nice. And overall, I'm happy I picked up this minifigure. As I said, there were a few others I was tempted to buy and I might have to order some more and look at a few of the other customs. But now it's time to take a look at the three customs in my mystery bag. It is worth noting with these hands, I have a one by three just to show you here that was on the side. The hands don't really clip into the holes of the studs, but I think that is because they've made the hands thick enough to not crack and not snap. They might be a cheaper plastic than ABS, I'm not quite sure, but you can fit Lego bar elements in them. And well, I don't know if I would risk putting a plate or tile in their hands. They do feel a bit weak, but as long as they're lightsaber hilts and other elements, you should be fine. They are Lego compatible, just not with plates and tiles. The reason I have saved opening this until I have it on camera is because I don't want you to think that I've added one of my own minifigures or perhaps I bought a more expensive one and switched it out. I mean, this was only three pound. I talk a lot about the 20, 30 pound customs, which to be fair, definitely look as good as this one, but the quality for this in person is so close to Lego, it is really, really cool. But this is completely sealed. I don't actually know how they get this sealed because I doubt these have been made in a factory. There must be some way you can like stick this down or something, but these are completely sealed. Three minifigures, as I said, they were a tenner. They're all Star Wars minifigures and they were given to me for five pounds. Now, on the website, they do have, I think it's three clone troopers you can get for five pound. I don't know if these are all gonna be clone troopers or if I'm gonna get some more expensive minifigures perhaps, but I'm excited to find out. So let's crack this open or tear this open, I guess, as it does have a tear to open bit on top. And I'll try not to reveal all three minifigures. Let's take a look at the first minifigure, which is Mace Windu with BB-8. Now I know BB-8 and Mace Windu don't exactly belong in the same era, but when I had a look on the website and when I was looking in person, they don't actually do any sequel custom minifigures or didn't have any two hand. So that is why BB-8 has been put in. They've got a big emphasis on droids. You saw the translucent R2. There was also the mini R2. There were a bunch of different 3PO's. There was Dio. They had their own mold for Baby Yoda, which looked really cool. And actually they had a custom Yoda and I was a bit disappointed that it didn't match my one from the other day. So let's build this minifigure and get onto the next. And like with the ninth sister, you can see actually I dropped the hand when I first tried to put it in. The hands were a bit harder to put in, I think. One of them was, I think the right hand was too thin for the left arm and this one was too thick. So perhaps that's why they have included a bonus hand. There might be a little inconsistency with the hand molding, but you get enough hands to fit in the figure and then you still get the one extra in case there is a problem. There is a bubble in the lightsaber here and there was, I think, one in one of the Ninth Sisters blades, you can see. I'm trying to use the back of my hand to help my camera focus. You can see there is a bubble in the top blade there. So it's not as good as Lego's official versions, but if I'm honest, I've got a load of bubbles in my lightsabers from Lego sets over the years, from back when they weren't as good. 
BB-8 is a solid droid. I think it's quite close to Legos in terms of printing. Again, the quality isn't quite up to the standard. We're comparing a custom that cost a couple of quid with a BB-8. Well, BB-8's a side character in this. So these would probably only cost a couple of quid between them, but you do get the line through BB-8. Windu is actually pretty nice. They have their own style of printing, so the faces are different to Lego. It reminds me of a cross between the Clone Wars face and the Lego face we see now. So I actually quite like it. And we do have arm printing on Mace Windu. A bit more detail than Lego had with the crumpling of the sleeves, which you'll see on most of my Firestar arms. But what about for figure two? Also, Windu came with a base plate, which hopefully I do see for the rest of these. And I have to steal one perhaps for the ninth sister. But figure number two. We have, oh, this is Lando Calrissian from the sequels. I was saying about buying the Rise of Skywalker Falcon, but I'd only want it for Lando and for the alien that Mark Hamill plays. I keep forgetting his name and I honestly really cannot remember it. So let's take a look at Lando. We once again get another base plate and I'll take a look at the figure once I've built him. So taking a look at Lando Calrissian, you can see, perhaps I should have moved my light over to here so you can see the minifigures a bit better. Perhaps that would create a bit more light. You can see that he is a bit more detailed than the Lego version. He's got, again, some more arm detail in, and I really like the printing. They've included toe printing for minifigures that I'm pretty sure Lego just give a well, in this case, they just give plain black legs. And I really like the belt piece as well that has been printed. Is that? I think that is just been, that's been printed 360. Take a look at that. So you can see it going just over the top of the leg there. And then that's also got the same belt design on the back. So that is really, really neat. They don't go over the top like a few other Star Wars Lego customs. I really like the faces on these. And we also get a pistol, which actually looks quite similar to my Firestar's toys pistol. And once again, we also get that bonus hand, which again, I had struggled putting in, so perhaps there's an issue with every third hand. It's nice that they include the extra one. So I've got a very similar pistol here that I have used for my Han from Moss Eisley. And you can see that they're almost identical. You can tell one has a bit sharper edges I think and maybe a bit more detail on the Firestar one which it did cost me a bit more but honestly both of these look really really cool and I'm very happy that I finally got a sequel trilogy Lando figure. Now on to the last minifigure it could be best till last I haven't checked which minifigure I've got yet and I have got this could, this is Boba Fett. This does look really, really awesome. So I've checked this out online and this is the most unique minifigure that they sell. So I'm gonna crack this open and then we can take a look as long as I don't rip the cape or anything first. So here we have the minifigures and more Boba Fett. This does look really, really cool. I can't say I'm disappointed that I didn't get any clones because the figures I got have been really, really neat. Now this Boba Fett is full of different accessories. I mean, to start off, we've got the viewfinder on the top, which much like most of the clones ones does rotate. And I'll probably actually be stealing this for a few different photos and mocks that I make. You've also got this on the other side, not quite sure what it is, but it's a very, very nice, Little accessory for the helmet. The helmet itself does actually have a hole in the middle. Now, if I can take the helmet off without pulling the head with it, which is a problem I have with Lego minifigures, let alone custom. So I don't know if I'm actually gonna be able to do this. Maybe I have to take that off and record a video later. You'll be able to see that the helmet does actually have a hole on the front. The T that you can see through to the black head is similar to the old Boba Fett Lego minifigure, just a bit scaled more towards Boba Fett. And then we go down to the armor. Well, the chest plate is just that. It's the similar piece to, I guess the Lego equivalent is the one that Paz Vizsla has. And 
There's Saul Guerrero. Saul Guerrero is the other character I'm thinking of with the two studs on the back. And that is for the Boba Fett jetpack, which looks really cool. No split firing missiles or anything on this one, but it is really cool nonetheless. And that clips right on to the backpack. And then we've got the printed arms, which are slightly different on either side, representing the different sides of his armor. Of course, we don't have the yellow printed arms on the top. It's just sort of the under armor, the gray suit that he has. So this is Return of the Jedi Boba Fett, some cool printed legs. We have a brown belt that is another accessory and then Boba's blaster, which again, another really cool design. And I'm actually taken to this a lot better than the Firestar. Firestar feel like they've over-engineered theirs for action figures, whereas this fits with some of the other Lego blasts we got. Perhaps a bit more detailed on the back and less simplistic looking, but I really like this minifigure. And if you were wondering what Boba Fett looked like without his armor, then you're welcome. So it seems that once you've got a helmet and head connected, it's very, very hard to take it off. We didn't have any problems with the ninth sister down here, but Boba's really not coming out of his helmet, coming out of his shell, so to speak. So I'll try to attach an image online of the gap in the visor if I can find any pictures. So overall, I think it was a very successful haul. Of course, the four on the left, the purchase from minifigures and more, and Vader's Raiders responsible for the four on the right. So shout out to both of them, as well as the stall that had all the autographed Funkos that I showed you earlier, because I had a few conversations with the people running the stall and they were all very, very lovely. So I'd love to get some more minifigures from minifigures and more at some point in the future. I finally figured out how to attach the Boba Fett cape. And I've got to say, he looks a bit cooler with that cape. I'm very happy I got Lando. I did work out the value of these three figures. Well, the value on the two on the side was seven pound and I couldn't find Lando on the site. I actually couldn't find most of the minifigures that I saw today. There were so many cool clones. I'll show you another clip of just some of the minifigures they had on display and they don't just sell minifigures. They've also got patches and they had pins and a few other cool accessories like lanyards and even accessories for your Crocs. So if you do live in the UK, definitely check them out. I'm not quite sure what delivery and all that is, but they are quite good quality, not Lego quality, but they are the best that I have found that isn't coming from official Lego. And obviously that means you don't get the massive Lego price tag. So this is going straight on my minifigure display we might as well put it there right away. So I have to clear some room next to Cal. Actually, look at that. There is a spot right next to Cal. Let me bring some light onto my display where I think that is where Iden Versio spot is. So I'll have to unclip the Ninth Sisters lightsaber. By the way, this lightsaber is also pretty cool. I don't have an official Lego one to compare it to and the camera is going to try to struggle to focus because of how small it is, but it's a really neat design. And if I ever make customs of more Inquisitors, that will be the piece I use, at least until I pick up the ghost that I think has one in the cockpit. So it clips down quite nicely on official Lego studs. I mean, this display itself is a bit wobbly and weak in some areas, but look at that. The Ninth Sister just fits in with all the other Lego minifigures and only you and I know that they're not official. Well, I guess that's the only people watching this video, but I really do like that minifigure. So that was everything Lego that I picked up today, or at least Lego compatible. So let me know if you would like to see more of them custom minifigures. I think some of them designs is really, really good. And because they are so cheap, it means I could just collect a lot more than actual Lego minifigures. And I was so tempted with some of the Funkos and other things I saw about, but I managed to, well, show some restraint because I still ended up getting myself eight minifigures. I'm very happy to have the ninth sister become a part of my minifigure display. It's a minifigure that we really needed from Lego. And it's a shame we're not gonna be getting any of the others from the Jedi game franchise. I'd love for at least someone in a set. It just feels like they're recognized a bit more. Speaking of, there were a few celebrities at this event. I didn't get any photos or autographs with them. In fact, I didn't take photos of any of the people dressed up in costumes and there were loads. There was someone dressed up as George Lucas with a Jar Jar Is Life poster and that was hilarious. I think you got a glimpse of Boba and a Bespin Luke with Yoda on his back at the start of the video. 
but we had celebrities like Mike Quinn, who was 9-num and then did 10-num, Reyes, I think. He also did Sai Snootles and a few other characters. He showed up most recently in Andor. We had Chris Bunn, who was one of the original Stormtroopers from A New Hope. I think he had a few other roles and also was a background character for Superman, I think we heard him saying. Richard Cunningham, who was an officer, and I think, what was the show I said he was in? And I think he was also in Queen Charlotte. And then we had Nick Joseph, who was the medal holder in the ceremony on Yavin at the end of A New Hope. I've built a mock, and that is one of my favorite parts of the mock that I included, the black box that he holds that the medals come out of. So check out that video after this one. But that's only half of the celebrities. I think last minute they also added an official Topps Trump Star Wars artist as well was there, which was awesome. And that was on top of all the other vendors there. So it's really great to go to some of these smaller conventions. And if it weren't for my uncle, I wouldn't have actually known about it. So massive shout out to him because he also paid for the entry ticket for me and my partner. So we had a lot of fun. And even though we were there for just a little over an hour, we saw so much. There was so much cool art and some other really cool customs that I might be picking up later on this channel. So before you go, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on more Star Wars customs, some mocks. There were some really cool Ahsoka figures, but hopefully we get... I don't know why my camera just passed out. We are getting to the end of the video. No need to rush me, but hopefully we get some more Ahsoka Lego customs released soon because we still don't know what set that Ezra is coming in. And they're supposedly meant to be dropping a set on June 1st. So keep an eye out for a bonus video if any more sets do drop, because of course I'm recording my video a day early for the releases. So I'm not able to add it to that. And thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. May the bricks be with you always.